Oh, all right then. All right, bombums, oh, not bombums. All right, sugar ones. Moving on, moving on. Uh, second game. We're gonna have Chia coming out as box artist here. Survivor team comes a uh, psychologist, coordinator, antiquarian, and the <coughs> and the forward. It seems like forward didn't bring borrow time here once again. So. It's going to be quite interesting to see. But first, she's chasing against a psychologist here. Psycho should be loop, should be able to loop around these big buildings for quite a while. As of now, early game, should be able to buy quite a bit of time. But we do see here as well, she is trying to land a little bit more wax on the Psycho. But with 72 wax on psychologists, I'd say it's more than enough to register a first set right here, even if you do put the pallet down. That is, if the wax doesn't... Oh no, the wax was depleting, but just about enough time. Just about enough time and that's fast pallet breaking if I'm not wrong that's definitely fast pallet breaking so we're gonna run uh, trump card detention with fast pallet breaking alongside with excitement here Nanako being nearby as well we could definitely change targets here since there's no point in chasing after someone upstairs when we can just come out here to look for an antiquarian when oh you are on your blink not blink excitement so excitement popping out there a little bit early as well Forward knowing this as well should come in to rescue. It seems like Forward doesn't want to come to rescue. I guess I guess this is just confidence, I guess, in Forward side with Nanako's um flush. But with this amount of stuff on Nanako's hands, the flute wasn't it wasn't the best before. Pulls the ball right here. We're gonna get immediate stun. We still do have quite a bit of stuff left, but we're changing targets here once again for the forward. We got the flywheel out. Very nice patient there coming from Fox's side. And gonna chase after the forward here, most likely for the guaranteed tie. Whether or not forward has borrowed time here or not for Chia. Oh no, he missed that one. Ah, uh, he should not have missed that. If he didn't miss that, it would have been way better before jumping over that window there. No window speed boost. Here, realizing this as well with 68% wax as well. We should be able to, yeah, get a full wax on towards the forward right there. Having barely any balls remaining. Those balls will only be used as a mini flywheel for that wax artist short attack hitbox. But with Chiyue here, he is still trying to chase after the forward here for as much as he can. The only issue is the cypher machines. There's only one remaining. Ah... Ah, uh, ah, uh, right, that was, oh, I see why now, oh, I see why, oh, that makes perfect, you know what, that makes perfect sense, but who's also nearby, antiquarian, and a coordinator, but excitement is ready, which is the good news, if we turn near anti right here, even if anti flutes down, shouldn't really matter, shouldn't really, oh, hey. Eh? Oh, we're not gonna use it. Okay, we're not gonna use it. We're not gonna use it. We, we, we're we just buying time. We're just buying time for ourselves right now, but we're definitely not going to use it. But seeing where, seeing the blood trails right there, knowing that Pibisha is also nearby as well. For now, what I would say is like, survivors are missing that much cypher machines. What survivors are missing is forward to get out of this area. As long as forward can get out here, then that cypher machine will ultimately be locked for well, it won't be locked forever. Then the survivor can just finish off that cypher machine and everything else should be fine. But we're gonna come out with a double hit. Terror shock down. Ooh, the terror shock down. Ooh, okay. Lon is also coming in to rescue, but in this case scenario, it probably would be better for you to... Well, I mean, Lon's taking the long way over, right? It's not beneficial there, especially just when Hot Wax has already went into cooldown as well. But going in from the back here, we're going to land a normal hit, which is nice. But doesn't seem like Lon would be able to reach towards our air just on time as well. Because we all we need to do is to get the Blob Wax out and then we have our second one right here. So that's a double down scenario here for not only the hunter to gain advantage in but also it's including in the f I, uh, all right that's two all right that's two okay that's two in a row okay that's two in a row all right this is why we follow road safety but but the second chair being nearby here should be able we should be able to lock that cypher for quite a bit of time the moment that you see a cypher machine shake is probably the moment that you can tp out if you really want to do so but for chia here what he probably wants to do is to wait for the survivor to go after half because he knows that the cypher machine isn't enough just yet and for nanako even if she wants to come in even if the auntie wants to come in 
You're gonna have to face against a Max Wax. Oh, wait, never mind. There comes in a patroller. The patroller may be able to look for the anti queer right now, but no! Cancelling the patroller right there sees where the anti is. Oh, that, that's a very nice, successful bait for the anti to come in. And. Oh, she dead. Oh, oh my lord, she dead. Okay, she dead. Wow. Wow, this actually turned into a three man elimination. Oh, wow. Uh, but for coordinator here as well, having power time is great enough, but this wax artist also does have the tension. So knowing that where the cypher machine was shaking there, she are rushing out towards this area as well. It seems like PP Shot is actually going to stay nearby, near that area, just to see if the hunter is nearby or not. But as we do see, Dungeon is actually on the entrance of Graveyard right there as well. So... <coughs> With Chiyu here still trying to loop around this area, it seems like PB Shot probably will be able to reach towards the chair, but 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 he can't. The issue is he can't, simply because of the fact that he does have a gun on his hands. Right, and this gun is gonna be used for dungeon. But uh more or less More or less PB Shot is dead, because all it takes is hot walks. Well one normal blob walks to lock, and then another hot walks right here to meet it down. So let's congratulate you for the formal elimination once again moving on to our second half. Alright, on to our second half we go. So I'm coming out as Night Watcher against a psychologist antiquarian forward and a female dancer. Mm, if we remember from last time, Sawim versus PB Shah's female dancer. That wasn't fun. That really wasn't fun to go against. But for Hua He right here, taking that pilot speed boost. Mm. Ooh, the drop down, the drop down. Oh no, the drop down here was going to hurt the most. We're going to get normal hit on towards the psychologist there. Psycho being able to loop around this area is going to be quite strong as well because she can still tank two more hits. But the only issue is the fact that psychologist doesn't have any items to continue with. So the mo Sam probably won't vault over this pallet. It's going to be very rare to see Sam vaulting over the pallet there unless he breaks his first and foremost. But with Tempest ready and all to go, it seems like he timed that one pretty darn well as well. So we should be able to get quite a bit of time here. Well, Sam probably should have cancelled that Tempest a little bit earlier just to register it. So it goes into cooldown immediately. But seeing the, uh, seeing the slow music boxes here, we're going to force Juan to come back towards this area and to break the pallet. And most likely to break the... Oh, oh that's a pullback! Wait a second, how did that pull back? Oh, that pull... Ah, oh, that was barely... Oh my god, Psychologist barely squeezed past that obstacle to get pulled back by Nightwatch there. But not getting blink out, survivors here are more or less worried that Nightwatch actually has excitement here instead. That was not good. That was not good for Juan. She, he definitely, like, Psycho here definitely could have continued for 20 extra odd seconds. But because of that now, we're gonna fit, end up with two slow music boxes destroyed. And survivors missing quite a bit of cypher machines here. But I guess the only good thing about this is the fact that survivors only need a one-man escape. So like considering the fact that she got a four-man elimination last game. For this game, the full pressure is actually on Sam right here. But Ku Tao is going to be nearby. We do have Tinnitus here as well from the forward side. But forward is also revealed to the hunter. Ku Tao. Oh, okay, that's bad. That's very bad. There's also nothing over there as well, but we should... Kuta not putting a ball, not putting a ball. We're not putting a ball, surprisingly. That is really bad. But anyway, saw him right here going towards the forward for pulling the ball away. We also do see that the female dancer is also coming in nearby as well. But the only problem with female dancer coming in nearby is you kind of force two survivors to come in to rescue here. That's not the best case scenario for you, especially when you're trying to play mind games here and you manage to tunnel down the psychologist. That's usually how you would do it. But now then, who is in danger? Female Dancer is in danger because Female Dancer is the one that doesn't have any items remaining now. But at least for the survivors here, they know that they forced a teleport out of Sawem. They forced Trump card out of Sawem. But Sawem, max presence here with barely two and a half slash three cypher machines finished. This isn't going to be that good for him, let's say. We're going to be able to vault over that and didn't get the hit right there, sadly. But breaking the pallet here will be priority as if you don't, you're going to get Taikai there for quite a long time. And now watch is afraid of tight hiding, which is unsurprising. Now watch is afraid of tight hiding. But anyways, to be pulling down the pallet there as well. Meanwhile, so I'm destroying the pallet. During speed during during the speed boost. It's kind of just there to bait the survivors out. And yeah. As I was saying, just to bait the survivors out, and they actually got baited. I mean, anyways. 
Three speed boosts, that's gonna be, the, well, three dashes, that's gonna be the first dash, that's gonna be the second speed boost, that's gonna be the second dash coming out right here. Should be able to look straight towards the bee's eyes and say, bye bye, hey, it barely misses it right there, but say hey, bye bye. And they're only missing one side for mission. They're only missing one side for mission, that's a 70%. I would, I wonder who, I think it's actually Kutau Cypher in, in, in middle, in balcony, but we're gonna TP there straight towards uh, Antiquarian. Chasing anti, I, chasing after anti really isn't the best. But right after getting the first flute out, I guess. Oh my god, the way he finds the survivors are insane. To be fair, two, three, and I think he can actually tempest. Okay, he actually typed him there instead. Hey, that hit the chair though. Very nicely done by Kutal. Very nice page. Um, on forward side, we want to get the hit on forward, but forwardly pulling out a little bit further than I expected. Now then, we're going to see where Zubi is running. Zubi is actually running closely towards the Cypher machine. That's a 70%. Not the best case scenario, but this is the only place where Zubi can actually run, simply because of the fact that there's no palace near that area. And it seems like Zubi got tunneled down, which is really unfortunate there. Now... No one can decode that cipher machine. I think that's the main issue. Even if forward gets up on time, forward wouldn't really reach towards this um, chair. So what, what most likely would happen here is we will be seeing a lot of flutes coming out from Nightwatch here. Uh, jumping, that that's not the best case scenario though. I guess if you want to rescue, you could rescue, but now Huaha will have to become an escort for the female dancer here. Anti and female both rushing in towards Graveyard here as fast as they can, but female dancer, not female dancer, Anti current with the first, with the second stab there. We have a third sweep as well to use. It seems that we have the sweep outside because it's not really at the best area. And with a Cypher Machine Prime, we should be able to immediately pop here. We are going to do that. Flywheel was not ready, but the speed boost did get them out of range. So I'm not getting hit right there once. Again, a little bit unfortunate from both sides, but with this in mind as well. Last game, saw him got a formal elimination, but this game, Chiyue got a formal elimination. We're going to go straight out to look for Kutau's forward right here, who has used up self-heal, of course. But <coughs> once again, that is the main issue. That is actually the main issue here. Because now, not only does Ford have to continue here for quite a bit of time, it's also the fact that... Oh, didn't get a terror shock hit there, thankfully. It's also the fact that, you know, Anti is the one rushing towards the exit gate, and Anti is the one who decodes slow. But uh, they only need the one-man escape, so even with that in mind, you will have to be forced to cheer the forward. And the best what you can do here is you either TP to Antiquarian, or, or you stay here and wait. But if you do TP, then then it's kind of game over, isn't it? Well, I mean, Simon will be able to get a four-man elimination here, sadly. But... A tie should be guaranteed, or a tree man, but a tie definitely should be guaranteed right here. We do see that Zubi is currently opening the exit gates instead of rescuing the forward, which is very surprising to be fair, because I felt like he should have rescued the forward first, regardless. Oh, misses the hit right there, so I am. Uh, that extra five seconds definitely got the gate opened. Well, I mean, five seconds probably didn't do much because the gate was going to be opened anyways. But, you know, you never know. Each second counts here. Each second counts here. Uh, we have three dashes to use. That's going to be the first one. This, uh, it's going to be a tie. It's going to be a tie. But let's congratulate here for Chiyue's team for winning game two. Moving on to game three.